Hello, I am Bones. And in this video, I will be explaining why I do not use F3X plugin for building. Well firstly, I want to say I do not want this video to judge whether or not you do or do not use it. This is my personal preference and plugins entirely depend on your workflow and views. With that in mind, this video will explain why I don't use F3X, as well as 5 plugins I do use. You can view them in the chapters below. I've added an on-screen keyboard so you can see my actions and keybinds. Firstly, what is F3X? F3X is advertised as a powerful and convenient building tool, which I already dislike since it's not much different than the already existing Studio tools. To install F3X, you can open Toolbox in Studio and select Plugins on the drop-down and type F3X. When you press Install, it'll simply appear in the Plugins tab. Now we can open the plugin and talk about why I dislike it. Before we do anything, I do want to make it known that I am knowledgeable in F3X, so I am not just hating for no reason. I've been building on Roblox for a very long time, before F3X even came out. And I used it for a long period of time, and I found Studio tools to be faster and easier to use if you put a second of your time into learning it. The main reason I dislike F3X is simply how it's presented, it's shown to be an easy, powerful, and convenient tool, exciting new builders into thinking there is an easy way, a more convenient way to build. And if a plugin like that does exist, it's something you can use alongside the main building tools, not replace it. Something I hear a lot is that F3X has more capabilities than Roblox. For instance, F3X has keybinds, more available tools, etc. But Roblox also has keybinds, in fact if you go up to the top left, in File, and then Advanced. You can create your own keybinds for whatever you want. An easy look up here is just Tools, Part, and Movement, but look around for your own specialized keybinds. You can see if I set my wedge keybind to exclamation mark. In Studio when I press that button, it instantly spawns a wedge at my view. Pretty cool, isn't it? You can also set keybinds for plugins to easily open them. For the sake of this video, F3X will be set to T. The second reason I don't like F3X is that people glaze its ability to scale multiple parts on an axis at once. But this is entirely possible on Roblox Studio 2. If you go to the Model tab, then union the selected parts, scale them, and then separate. It actually does the exact same thing smoother. Let me show you slowly. Select the parts you want to scale. Union them, you can press Ctrl Shift plus G. Once they are unioned, you can scale them. And it will scale both at the same time. And then you can press separate, which will turn them back into the original two parts. Just after the scale has happened. The third reason I dislike F3X is the lack of scale control. For instance, in Studio if you hold Shift, Control, or Alt. While scaling or moving, you can ignore stud increments or mirror scale. In F3X this is a button you have to toggle. In Studio, you can see I have more control over how I scale and move my parts with keybinds. This allows for me to have more precise resizes and easier, convenient tools to work with. A quick fourth reason I dislike F3X is that it doesn't have edge snapping, snap to parts, it's simply outdated. It isn't keeping up with the new gen Roblox Studio tools. You can see the white dot allowing for easy snapping to part edges. Now let's try in F3X. As you can see it doesn't snap, obviously it has generic stud increments. But it doesn't lock onto edges. In summary, I dislike F3X because it advertises to be a powerful alternative to the base tools in Roblox. But it no longer has any advantage over the original tools, you already have to install something entirely new just to use the same pre-installed tools. F3X is only beginner-friendly because it started off as an in-game building import for players to build stuff while in-game. And they brought it to Studio so they had the same tools. But this can very easily damage a new builder's abilities. So what plugins do I use? 
these five plugins up the top of my tab are my usual plugins. I don't use plugins often, but when I do it's most likely these. The first plugin I find useful is Stravent Mirror or any reflecting plugin. It's useful if I make a symmetrical map or build and I can just mirror it over to the other side. The second plugin I use a lot is Model Brush, which allows you to quickly and easily place models and group parts. I find these plugins particularly useful because they work as an extension of the default tools. Not a replacement. This next plugin is an optimization plugin. It helps with shadows and cast shadows. Basically, it lets you set a maximum size using X, Y, and Z scale dimensions, and if it's below that size, it will disable shadows. This makes it so in large maps, small parts automatically don't cast a shadow, which those shadows could cause lag. I didn't mean to, but I realized that my keyboard covers the plugin interface. But it's okay, all it does is randomize part colors, there's not much to it, select a group of parts, and it will randomize based on a selected value. For instance, since all the parts we have are green, it will randomize between shades of green. This next plugin is also really fascinating and useful for large scale maps. It's a heat map for performance, showing you where your laggiest parts in the map are. Keep in mind, this plugin can be laggy to use because it does add extra parts to view where these performance drops happen. Let's see what this plugin looks like in a larger scale build. This is an old creation I made around two years ago. Let's use it to see how this heat map works. This build is very unoptimized, but that only means it'll show off how this plugin works the best. Let's clear up the view here. Now we can see a little better, the red spots indicate large densities of parts, whereas the clear parts don't have many parts at all, it's simple but it really can help optimize. Now that we've discussed why I don't like F3X and 5 other plugins I use instead, it's worth noting that the plugins you use are ultimately your choice. But it's worth taking a chance to use plugins to use alongside Roblox Studio tools. Not replace them. I hope you learned something this video, please subscribe I need to pay rent.